Hello, everyone. So today I have a very special guest with me. It is my cat. So if you hear any meowing or cat-like noises during this video, that is exactly who it is. It's my, it's my cat friend. So his name is Creamsicle. He's actually my profile picture on YouTube and on the gallery. So hello, Creamsicle. He's been such a good boy. But anyways, as we get started today, so I recently bought the Cottage Living Pack, and today's build is on one of the empty lots of that game, or of the world that comes with the Cottage Living Pack. So that's two Old Mill Lane. I was going to name it something else, but I decided to just keep the name, um, since it's an empty lot, so someone could easily search up that, looking for a house that fits perfectly on two Old Mill Lane. So, for today's joke, as we get started with the outside of the home, since this is a farm built and cottage living is all about the farm and the countryside, what does a cross between a duck and a chicken say in the morning? So think about that throughout the course of this video. This one's a longer one today. And again, the joke is, what does a cross between a duck and a chicken say in the morning? So think about that. So for this build here, I recently did the Wisteria Farms build, which was more of an actual barn house, like a physical barn that became a house, where this is more of like a country home that is also on a farm, but doesn't happen to be a barn. <laughs> How about that? So I played around with the outside a little bit. I wanted to mostly focus on the pack that came with, uh, or the furniture that came with this pack and the design details. So this is what I started with at first. I really like the uh, roofing, the new roofing details and things like that that came with Cottage Living. So I did for sure want to use those. And as you can see, I went with the white and darker teal colors for the design details on the house and the shutters. Unfortunately, as I'd like to say, my cat friend has left. Uh, maybe he'll be back later in today's video, but um, he decided to stop for a visit. So here I am looking to see which uh, bricking would look nice with the door and figuring out which color of roofing material would look the best. And since I put in a fence here, I was trying to decide which of the, what, three fences that came with Cottage Living would look the best with this house. And I really wanted to use this door here, as you can see, which matched the best with the rock wall. So I went with the rock wall since I have not used that item yet. So speaking of cats, I really like cats. You probably noticed that considering I just talked about my cat and the fact that he's my profile picture and I also have that in my bio. The thing is, I'm also allergic to cats, unfortunately. So I really like them, but as I've gotten older, they don't like me, specifically the dander. So when we first got my cat, I would break out in hives. So uh, sometimes I like to wash my hands very frequently after petting my cat. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up with some hives uh, after petting him a little bit, but I love him nonetheless. He's, uh, he's around five years old now. We got him when he was a year old from the shelter, and um, he smelled out a little bit. He, um, he likes the vents. So in your house, if you have um, any kind of like air vents on the floor, you know the ones that are like kind of angled, um, and you can pull the front of them off and stuff. When he was younger, a young cat, he would tear those off all the time. I mean, he would just pull those fuckers off. We'd come home. They were everywhere. So funny. The silliest things. Like, he just really liked the vents. Could never really figure out why, but he really liked the vents. We had one that just kind of like sits on the floor and he would always like pull it up <laughs> and it would be over by the floor. Uh, also, door stops. Uh, if you know the door stops, you know the one that makes that like bring noise. Um, if you like put it back and forth, the ones that are springs. We had a couple of those in our house for a while, and so we also had to get rid of those because uh, Creamsicle really liked those. So I know sometimes I'd be hanging out, uh, you know, just doing whatever, and I'd just hear that noise. And sure enough, there he was in the bathroom playing with, <laughs> playing with the spring. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> we had to get rid of those as well. So we had to install just straight metal ones instead of the ones that go back and forth. We still have a couple floating around the house that he hasn't found, but all of his um, 
repeated uh, favorite locations. We had to remove those because you'd just be doing whatever you need to do. And then you just hear that noise and he just would, you know, he'd go to town with it and you would just be like, okay, I guess that's, uh, you know, all these toys and that's what he decides to play with. I think that's a common thing though with cats, you know, you buy them all these toys and then they want to play with like the doorstop or the box that the toy came in or like your blinds and eat your blinds. I had a cat one time that liked the lick blinds, not bite them, just lick them. Um, not sure that dust is that tasty, but apparently to him it was. <laughs> also a sweet cat. Um, but yeah, cats do the silliest things. Really a cat person. Um, unpopular opinion, dogs are just too high energy for me. So I'm a short person, a very short person. So dogs, you know, intimidate me a little bit in the fact is that a lot of them can jump and they will be taller than me. So I, I don't particularly like that. And dogs can just be really high energy. You know, they're like, hi, how you doing? What are you up to? Uh, let, let's go here. Can you play with this now? Oh, I want to go for a walk. It, it's a bit much for me. It's a bit much for me. I enjoy the, um, the kind of attitude that cats have, you know, like, hey, how you doing? Uh, just thought I'd come visit. Um, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go sleep for the rest of the day. And maybe I'll see you, maybe I won't, and we'll reconvene another time. And personally, I like that. That's more chill for me. I know cats that'll meet you at the door, um, like another cat that I have. And then some cats that just like to sleep. And that's okay with me. <laughs> so definitely more of a cat person. I was going to put that little cute stained glass in there with the fox or whatever, but I ended up changing it because the teal what do you call it, inner side of the window match more. So I changed that out and put in some more like ivy type materials and details. Um, but yeah, so here I am continuing to finish the house on the outside before moving to the inside. Do a little landscaping, just some basic stuff. I'm not a professional at landscaping. When I do these farmhouses, though, I really try to go all out, you know, with the fence and everything. And another thing I try to do, too, is the last build that I did was on a 64 by 64 lot, and I mentioned that I didn't use all of the space and it could be placed on a smaller lot. I did the same thing with this house. So I think this is on a 40 by 50 lot or something like that. Uh, again, that's not a super, like, popular lot size. I feel like there's a lot of, like, 20 by 30 lots and, like, things like that. So I don't know if that would fit on that small little lot, but I tried not to use all of the available space so then it could fit on a smaller size lot as well. Not just the lot that it is currently being built on. So doing a little bit of landscaping and some rocks. You know, I was really in the rock mood. I just finished recording uh, another video that'll go up soon. It's an eight minute video. So as of recording this, it's called Bare Necessities. It may have already went up at this point or it might be the video that goes up next. Um, but yeah, that was a super quick one. I was, I would already be done recording that video at this point. Uh, it went by super fast. I forgot to mention the joke. Um, so until like five minutes in and that's like the whole video at that point. So it was kind of weird. I'm just talking for a little bit longer. This one is roughly 34 minutes as you've already seen probably because although this house took me a while, it did not take me as long as the, uh, Wisteria farm build. That one actually took me like three hours. This one took me like two hours and like 15 minutes to build. Um, so I didn't have to put it on eight times the speed, which is great because I feel like eight times the speed is kind of fast. What do you think? Uh, this is on four times the speed. I personally like that a little bit better. It's quick enough, but not too quick. You can still keep up with all the things and details that I'm putting in. At this point with the house, I'm really happy with how it looked on the outside. So I'm kind of mostly done with the outer like surface of the house itself and working on some trees and landscaping. Ooh. Excuse me. I really need to start getting up sooner. Again, I'm recording this at one in the afternoon. I just woke up at like 11 o'clock again. I, I told myself today that I was going to wake up earlier and um, I used to be the kind of person that could wake up, you know, at like set an alarm. I would wake up at the first alarm. I wouldn't even look back. You know, I just got up and I'd be like, who needs four alarms? You know, like imagine. Well, I'm that person now. So I set like four different alarms and I turned all of them off. Um, snoozed them and turned them off. So 
here we are. I've only been up for a couple hours and it's already one in the afternoon. So it's already almost time to go for a run. <laughs> so with uh, my semester starting up again fairly soon, I got to get back on that. So I'm doing a lot of recording right now so I can have some videos to post while I'm at school because uh, with classes, I really just don't have time. So I'll be doing less frequent uh, uploads, although it's not like this is a super popular channel, so I doubt many people are really going to care, <laughs> and that's okay. But for those of you that have watched a couple of my videos and do like some of my builds, um, that's what's going on. So there'll be some less builds coming up, and I'm trying to do lots of builds now, so then I'm ready to post those once I get back to classes and things like that. Because I have some outside of the classroom commitments that take up a lot of my time. Although they are a good experience, they do take up quite a bit of time. So I don't really have a lot of time to build or do fun things uh, during the semester. Um, so yeah. So there'll be less time or more time between uploads and less uploads to begin with. So I'm trying to see if I can get a lot of that stuff taken care of before the semester starts. If you're a college student, you know that struggle very well. But yeah. So here I am building another pond. I like to build little ponds with my farm builds. I did a small one last time. If you watched the Wisteria Farms build, I built a pool because I forgot that you could just build a pond like this, and then I had to go back and redo the pond, which is probably why it also took me a lot longer than this build. Uh, it's also a bigger lot and a bigger house, but I did a small little pond this time that you could theoretically go fishing in, and a small little, uh, a small little farming area. Oh, hello! So as I was talking about one of my cats frequently, my second cat has decided to join us. Hello. So if you hear any more cat noises, this is from my second cat. Um, his name's Cookie. So he's a little black and white tuxedo cat, and he's super sweet. He likes to get on top of cabinets. So whenever we're eating dinner, he likes to jump on top of the cabinets and just stare you down from the top. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so he's pretty funny. He uh, likes to make a lot of noises, and whenever it's close to, like, dinner time, I'm sure if you have a cat or a dog or any kind of animal, you know how they get right before dinner time. Well, this guy here, we're 30 minutes out from dinner time, and he's he's losing it. He just kind of meows the whole time, and he's just over it, you know? He uh, He's ready. He's ready for dinner time. So he's got a while for dinner time right now, though, so hopefully he can hold it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you heard any cat-related noises, that was him. He's, uh, he's hopping around and taking a look. Uh, right now he's figuring out whether or not he wants to go under my bed to hide for a little bit. I have a really low down bed, and whenever the, uh, the doorbell gets rung, my orange cat creamsicle, he likes to hide under my bed for a while. Cookie, on the other hand, is right now scoping out my trash can and is trying to eat the trash can liner. Not sure why that's a, uh, a popular menu item, but um, he's sizing it up over there. Cookie. Psst. Psst. Cats. Ugh. Am I right? They get into the silliest things. All right, looks like he's done with that. Anyways, I ended up using some of these ruin details from Get Together um, to make it kind of, I don't know, I was thinking about this being like a, with the rock wall, I thought it would look kind of cool. Didn't really have much of a plan for it, it just kind of came about, so hopefully you like it. I think it turned out okay. I ended up adding some, some terrain paint later, and as you see, I ended up adding some bushes and things. So, yeah, to kind of make it like a old-style farmhouse, you know, things like that. This is actually the first house that I built with, like, actually in the new town that comes with this pack, so that was super cool. I didn't realize how big and, like, spacious this lot was. Like, not just a lot you can build on, but the space that's next to it that um, is unoccupied and you can't build on. So here I am adding some terrain paint. Recently when I've been doing a lot of my terrain paint, whenever I like reload a build, it's been deleting all my terrain paint. I think I mentioned this in an earlier video. Uh, I was watching a little Simsy video and she mentioned it as well. It's happened to me a couple times now, so I keep saving my builds um, because whenever I sometimes come back to them, if I like leave this and go do something and come back, for some reason my terrain paint keeps getting deleted. Does that happen to you guys? Let me know in the comments. Because uh, that keeps happening to me as well. So I'm not quite sure what the reasoning is for that. 
In this build, I included a little rabbit house, and I think I did one for the birds, too. Ooh, excuse me again. Apparently sleeping for like 10 hours is not enough still. I have to work on that. I have an 8 a.m. next semester. What am I going to do? That kind of just came over me the other day, and I was like, oh, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> I try to avoid them, but sometimes you just can't, you know, it's a required course, you kind of have to take it, so very unfortunate, but it should be a good class, just particularly early, I'm not exactly an early person, I like to wake up at like 8 o'clock if I can get out of bed, like that's like early, that's like a good time for me, not like already been up, already somewhere, learning, doing, taking notes and things at 8 o'clock, that's, uh, that's early for me. <laughs> okay, here we go, finishing out the little uh, porch, well not porch, but little like back patio area, and now we go inside. Well, for the most part. <laughs> so, right, so now going inside, I ended up doing the kitchen on that little bump out that's only on the first floor, and then I put in my stairs for the second floor. This home ended up having, ooh, let's see if I can remember how many bedrooms it has. I think it has three. I think I gave it three bedrooms, which are all upstairs. I did this one more closed off too. My uh, Wisteria Farms build was more open concept. Some of it was still kind of cut off, but I tried to make this more of a traditional country home where it's more cut off and, um, you know, not exactly the super open concept living that's popular right now. Uh, you know, this wasn't popular back in the 90s and things like that. It was more cut off, separate rooms and things like that. I've been really enjoying um, matching the stove and the fridge and the, like, oven vent thing to whatever the, like, cloth part is in these cabinets. So for this build, it ended up being pink. Um, can't say that a pink kitchen is what I thought I was going to build going in, but that was the color of the fabric and I wanted to match it. So pink it was. Here we go, adding some more little details. To make this kind of come to life. Put that right there in that little window. And I ended up using that because that kind of matched with the same color. Going in for our dining table. Last build I did a really big dining table. This time I did two small dining tables. Um, since there's also an island, that should be plenty of storage space. Or not storage space, what am I talking about? Seating space. <laughs> So right now I had it kind of open, looking for a rug, because that's my favorite part. Originally I did the wallpaper all the way around and I thought it was a bit much red, so I went with just white for the other side, having an accent wall. Really, I've been recently really into accent walls, not sure why. Um, is that a yay or a nay? Do we like the accent walls? Do we not like the accent walls? I think it looked nice in this one, but um, let me know. I don't always do them, but right now they've been kind of... Uh, on the forefront of my mind when building houses. All right, so going upstairs, I want to have the master uh, where that door is right there. So then theoretically, I didn't play test this, so I don't really know if they can go out there, but I wanted that to at least be included in the master because that's kind of like an extra little balcony feature. So I wanted that to be with the master and not with just any bedroom, but I didn't like that layout. So I had to go back in and fix it. Change it up a little bit. And I ended up putting the, here we go, all the lights so we can see everything now. And can't see it anymore, but I ended up putting the bathroom like next to slash behind one of the other bedrooms upstairs. I'll point that out when we go back up there. Here I am making this more of a closed in space. Put in a lot of these nice little archways. to try to make it more closed in, more country, you know, older style thing. So here's our entryway. And next I went in and put in the living room, which I also did with an entryway. Here I am looking for some very specific things to put in the entryway. I wanted some of those like little 
mudroom type of details that came with seasons and um, what's it called laundry day stuff but I ended up moving those around anyways because I wanted that chair so I went to use that too but that didn't quite fit put in some stuff from laundry day I have yet to use this cross stitch thing I um, in my game I haven't really used any of these items in actual gameplay yet because in my normal game I am waiting for one of my sims to age up well two of the sims to age up um, so then they can move out and go live at wisteria farms the first build that I made with that pack so I'm waiting patiently for that um, so I'm waiting for the one sim to use the cross stitching item, although I would like to know how it's going, but she's currently a child sim, so I've got a little ways to go. I'm also looking forward to using some of the new traits that came with the other sim. I'm hoping to really like animals, since before buying this pack, the one child, the girl, uh, I gave her the squeamish trait, so she's not going to like fishing and things like that. So I'm thinking that she's going to be more of like into cross-stitching and cooking inside. Maybe I can get her to garden. Not sure if that will make her feel squeamish or not. If so, we will change that up. But I'm feeling that she's going to really enjoy cooking and cross-stitching and doing some of that stuff inside while her partner is outside doing the... Uh, caring for the animals and farming and things like that. I'd like them to have a nice big family. I was going to make that and post that to like a family of them, but I think I might just wait and post the family when I make them when they age up. Because I was going to just do it and create a sim, but then I thought, I don't know, I'm going to design it and then I'm going to want to design the family. I make it my own personal save um, similarly, so maybe I'll do that. Should I post them? Um, you guys let me know. I want them to have a big family and lots of kids, and so then they can help out on the farm. Here is my uh, living room that I put in. So I've been putting these little llamas in most of my builds. Have you been able to find them? I don't think they're in every build, but they're in a good, good majority of them. So if you want a fun challenge, try to go back and see if you can find where I put the little llama guys from the um, Dream Home Decorator pack in most of my builds. For this theme, I did more of a rustic country and kind of fancy kind of build. So this isn't just, you know, your regular country type of build. I also want to make it kind of fancy. So a little bit country, ritzy almost. Like, I don't know how to describe it. What, what would that type of style be? I, I, it, it can't quite come up with the words for it, but it's kind of fancy. So it's like vintagey and glamorous and things like that but it's also country and kind of old style so you'll see what I mean when I start adding some more details in but I wanted it to kind of be kind of nice kind of um, fancy or my other one was kind of more just just country just kind of farm-esque so here I am putting in the little well I was going to put in the office space but I forgot that I do this well here it is yeah the office and library space Here we go. So it's kind of like an office and I also ended up putting in like a little game room. So this is what I mean by fancy. It's that high school years desk that's kind of fancy but also kind of country. You know what I mean? I don't really know how to describe that. I'm not the best with uh, describing that kind of stuff. So but yeah, so there's a little desk that the Sims could work at. And I was looking at some of the other desks for some reason and put in the little typewriter slash computer thing. And a little space heater. And I was going to put that in, but then I decided against it. You probably also noticed in the last build I tried to put it in there, but it just didn't quite fit. Um, I haven't used this desk a lot, the, like, the little Don't Make the Llama game, so I thought I'd include that in there. It looked kind of country-esque, too. So here we go with more wallpaper. And I had this big open space, and I wasn't really quite sure what to do with it, so while I was designing the bathroom I was kind of trying to brainstorm what to do with the space oh my cat friend is back but yeah so here I go trying to put in finish up the bathroom 
and I ended up deciding to change it to this kind of more fancy, old-fashioned mirror. Like I said, that's kind of the theme for this house. So I went with that instead. And here we go. So now we're on to little like bar area. So this is where it gets kind of fancy, kind of ritzy, kind of glamorous and vintage. Uh, that kind of idea that I was going for. So I put in the little globe bar and these little stools, which I think look kind of fancy. And then I went with the chandelier, and then I just completely trans transitioned into the vintage glamour pack to make it look kind of fancy. And then I was like, why even bother with um, this chandelier? I should just get the one from vintage glamour. So you'll see me switch that out in a second. I was going to do the whole, like, downstairs in that paneling, but I decided that would be a, much, a bit much, so instead I went with the fancy instruments type of deal. So, you know, I imagine that this family, you know, they are well off, this is their very, very nice instruments room, you know, they value music and the arts in addition to taking care of their livestock and animals outside, all about, you know, the full experience. Um, so that's how I made it more of like a country ritzy type of idea. If that's a type of style, I don't know. Just kind of making stuff up. But yeah, so that's the kind of vibe I was going for with this one. And here I go finishing up the downstairs. Just looking for a chair. I ended up deciding on just a very grandma-y, very, you know, type of seat I thought that, that would tone down the fanciness a little bit because it kind of needed to be toned down a little bit. And here we go, finishing up the downstairs before moving upstairs and looking for some details, putting a little rabbit, you know. And the little rabbit book, which was super cute. So as we near the end, which is kind of surprising because we still have the whole upstairs to do, but as we near the end of the first floor, we'll be moving to the second floor soon. I thought it'd be a good time to tell you the joke instead of waiting all the way to the end this time. So again, the joke was, what does a cross between a duck and a chicken say in the morning? So think about it. What does a chicken say in the morning and how would a duck impact that? So the answer is quack a doodle doo. So instead of cock a doodle doo, they would say quack a doodle doo. So I know that's pretty bad. Again, that is today's bad joke. Um, so hopefully you got a little bit of a laugh or a chuckle out of it. Here we go. I'm making I am making what I would imagine to be the teen's bedroom. Again, with that kind of like fancy but like kind of country type of style that I can't really think of the word for at the moment. Um, but yeah, so here I am doing that for the first bedroom putting in the desk, trying to figure out what other details match. Is there a table that goes with this? Like, is there a side table that matches completely? Because there's a different dresser that matches with the side table I have in this bedroom, and maybe I'm just missing it. Did they not make a side table that exclusively matches the same swatches as this bed and that desk? Um, could somebody let me know in the comments? Because I couldn't find it. Maybe I'm just missing it. Because, like, the little thing that you just saw me pull up there real fast, that was the dresser that actually matches with that side table. So I'm not quite sure if I'm missing that. Anyways, I imagine that this team likes uh, chess, and they're on the chess team, so I included that little chess uh, detail. And I'm obsessed with using those mirrors in the kids' or teens' rooms because they're just fun. And I had to put in the little mushroom chair since that came with Cottage Living, and I thought it was just super cute as a little seat for a sim. And since I like chess, I thought I had to include the fancy chess table from reaching the top level of the chess club uh, outside at the top landing. I thought that that was a must-have. And... Here I go, starting to design the 
second bedroom. So this is, you could say, a guest bedroom. Um, and this one's pretty small. As you can see, this is what I was talking about earlier. The master bathroom is actually behind this. So that's how I worked around the fact that I needed another bedroom, but I couldn't put it behind the master bathroom because then there would be no access to it unless you walked through another bedroom, which is really awkward and really weird. So that's how I kind of got around the fact that I wanted a master bathroom, but I also wanted a bedroom that was easily accessible without that weird hallway that I had at the beginning. So I ended up going with that. We've got a green themed bedroom here. And putting in some more wallpaper or paint, trying to decide exactly which color I want. Took me a little bit, I ended up going with that. It's kind of busy, but it's all right. All right, here we go, master bedroom. So I was trying to figure out which bed I wanted to use. I ended up settling on this one because I don't think I've ever really used this swatch of this bed. Um, put in that fancy mirror because we're going for that fancy country vintage feel, whatever that aesthetic is that I don't know the name of. Uh, I don't know if you would say it's Victorian, whatever it is, that's what we're going for. Um, it was kind of difficult though to try to match the wood since that bed is from Cats and Dogs and I think these dressers are base game. I think they're like the Princess Cordelia ones, so maybe they're kind of like C-esque and stuff. Um, so I had a little bit of trouble in trying to match the wood, but overall I think it matched pretty well. I went with these um, blinds in the beginning, or like curtains, maybe I should have kept those, I don't know. It's the same curtains, I just changed the swatch um, coming up. So I just tried to fill it in with some details and some things that I thought you might have in a master bedroom and a fancy country home. Here we go with some more of those rugs from Laundry Day, which I thought kind of lend themselves nicely. I'm really a fan of that little thing that holds the blankets and the pillows, a um, little wicker basket thing. I thought that was really fitting. Looking at some more details here, I just kind of threw a couple little clutter items in. Excuse me again. I can't stop yawning. <laughs> So anyways, I ended up changing the shears to that white color uh, to kind of tone it down a little bit. Here we are with the uh, master bathroom. So one of the last things to design in the house. And I wanted it to be green. I was kind of on a green kick for this house. Um, I don't know, I just kind of like the greens that came with this pack. So I kind of just kept going with it. We got the lighter green and the darker green that match with that tub. I ended up deciding on that, and here we go, we got the just regular upstairs bathroom for the other two bedrooms to share, and I went with the cats and dogs. It really nicely matches that um, tub from Parenthood, the shower tub, which I like to include a lot because, let me tell you, I hate moving the toddlers. Like, people were super happy when toddlers, like, actually came into the base game and everything, and it's a really good thing to have because, obviously... You just don't go from a baby to a child. That's just not even realistic. But toddlers are a pain in my behind. You know what I mean? Like, they're always hungry. They're always tired. There's always something wrong. Probably, probably kind of realistic to having a toddler, but not at the same time. So I always like to make sure that I include those tubs um, in a build because, you know, I don't necessarily, I feel like showers are a lot faster. So my Sims, like adult and child Sims and teen Sims, don't really use a tub. But, you know, you need a tub for the toddler. You can't have them get a shower, so. Yeah. But, as per usual, this build is available on the gallery by searching the hashtag KillyCat4 or just searching KillyCat4 on the gallery. This is to Old Mill Lane, and hopefully you enjoyed the build, and I'll see you next time. So, enjoy the last photos here, and, um, yeah. Feel free to download if you want, and I'll see you in the next build. Bye!